I'm at Wesley Kickstart today, and while I'm here, I'd like to continue my thinking in Luke's Gospel. The passage I'm going to look at may seem a little out of place at this time of the year when we're making a journey through Lent, but I hope you can see the link. Let me read from Luke 13, 31 to 35. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, go tell that fox, I'll keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I want you to notice that it was some of the leaders, the Pharisees, who warned Jesus that Herod wanted to kill him. Very important, we get bad pictures about the Pharisees and it's important that we see these important instances where in fact they were helpful. In spite of some sense of opposition amongst many Pharisees, there were very likely groups of people who respected the teaching of Jesus and Jesus responds to them uh, with this warning. And we find a number of things that are helpful to us. Jesus is on his way. He's on a journey. We're told in verse 33, in any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day. There is a real sense in which he is on a journey, on a mission. And it may well describe the fact that all of us are on a journey and, and life is not just static, it is constantly moving forward. Jerusalem is a city that did not live up to its name as a place of peace. It was known as a place of peace. But when you read these words, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets, stone those who sent you. And, and Jesus talks about longing to, to gather them like a, a mother gathers her chicks to herself. There's a real sense in which Jerusalem is not the Jerusalem that the Old Testament spoke about, that was known as a place of peace it was very often a different kind of place. And Jesus Christ enters where he's invited. That's an important thing. Jesus said it to disciples so often when he sent them out, you must go to the places that are ready to receive you. Now, when you apply that now into a different kind of context, and you see that Jesus is talking not about disciples going into homes, but going into the city of Jerusalem, you realize that this is significant. It will not be that long before his preparations become far more acute as he prepares for his entry into the city and what will be the final entry into the city prior to crucifixion and then of course on to resurrection. Our time will come and we must be prepared to respond and to receive him, whatever is true within our lives. You see, the one thing I notice when I turn the New Testament and I look at the ministry of Jesus is that he didn't run away from tension and danger, he didn't avoid it, he faced up to it whatever it was and you could argue the exact opposite. He ran into trouble, he ran into conflict, he moved towards that which would eventually result in the cross. There is nothing more dangerous than the way of Jesus Christ as he is prepared to lay down his life for his friends, to face the agony and the rejection that comes even from those who were around him and then disappear as disciples did into the night and for those to even deny and betray him. If we are to experience the life of God, then we need to be prepared to face up to the challenges that will come to us. In an organisation like Wesley Mission, I frequently have to look at the area of risk. We talk about risk management. We look at all our areas and work out which are the areas and what are the mitigating factors and circumstances that we have to be engaged in to minimise those risks. When Jesus' ministry was at very height, he had to be prepared to analyse, to look at the risks that were there before him. And this is the thing for me that is so penetrating about his ministry, is that he was prepared to take risks, costly risks, risks that would eventually lead to that greatest of all challenges, the risk of him laying down his life.
It's hard to, to think that we, we've reached this point in Luke's gospel, but I sense it, that the, the, the tone is somehow changing. We know that as the pages will turn, we will move towards the cross and we will see there the great sacrifice as God in Jesus Christ lays down his life. And very soon as we start to prepare ourselves for our Easter mission and for many of the things that will be part of our Easter and I hope yours, we'll consider those risks. And the fact that Jesus was prepared, I, I think one of the most penetrating verses in the New Testament is that Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem and the disciples followed on. He wasn't a leader from behind. He led out from the front and his leading from the front meant he was prepared to take the risk and he was prepared to face the cross and he was prepared to give himself completely.